I want to this time try and argue, not from the authenticity of the documents themselves, you might be convinced, these are authentic first century documents, absolutely, they've been transcribed correctly, and I believe these words are the words that the early church read. But of course the question you might have is, was it made up? Did the gospel narrators, did Peter, did Paul, did they make it up? Or were they just inventing a story about Jesus being the Son of God? Or is it true? And I want to answer that from a historical perspective, things that really over the years have helped me, and try and answer it in, in, in three very simple ways. The first one is this. When these accounts were written and being spoken about, Luke was, for example, writing um, only a few short years after the death and we believe the resurrection of Jesus. Um, so was the Apostle Paul in his letters to the various churches. Now, there were many hostile witnesses to Christianity. Not everybody, in fact, the majority didn't like this new uh, religion, this new cult, if you like, coming out from the ancient Near East, coming out from Palestine. And they were alive at the time of Jesus. They would know instantly if what was being told wasn't true. So, for example, with Luke, the historian, if the things he was writing were not true, if his facts were not true, there were plenty of witnesses still alive to say and disagree with it. So that's the first reason, from uh, kind of a historical reason. The second historical reason is this. Many of the things we read about are counterproductive to the story if you wanted to make it up. For example, the first eyewitnesses at the tomb were women. Now that may not mean a lot in 21st century sunny Brighton, but it meant a lot then. If you lived in the first century and you were a woman, you were not even allowed to testify in a court of law. Your words were meaningless. So why were women utilized? Why, why are they there? They're the first pe people to have said, no, we saw Jesus alive. There's no good reason for the gospel narrators to put that in unless it's true. Uh, secondly, there's lots of other things um, the disciples themselves many times come across as looking cowardly, foolish, arrogant. They're arguing with one another. There are um, all kinds of divisions between them. Jesus, on his last night in Gethsemane, says, you know, Father, can you, can you take this cup from me? Why, why is this information there? It's counterproductive to the story that they want to tell. And then thirdly, we have an English scholar um, he's dead now, C.S. Lewis. He became a Christian, but he, was, um, he, he knew uh, literature from antiquity. That was his specialist subject, if you like. Now, in contrast today, where we have fiction and novels with lots of facts and figures in them, that was unknown in antiquity. There was no such thing. So looking at it, for example, let me quote to you from Luke. Luke says, I have investigated. That's very different to any genre of literature from the time. Luke is saying and has proven today again and again, many times with archaeological discoveries, to have been an accurate historian as well as being someone who can write very eloquently in Greek. And again, for me, of course, I'm, a, I'm biased, I'm a, I'm a church pastor, I'm a Christian, I believe this, but I believe it, and, and over the years I have doubts like any human being, but I believe it because so much of my faith can rest on things like this. It hasn't come out of ether, it hasn't come out of thin air. When it's been thoroughly investigated, the Bible has again and again and again not proven to, to be wanting. So I would encourage you to find out if what I'm saying is true, to investigate the facts, to look into them, to search Google, to email me if you like to, and of course every Sunday we do church here in Brighton. So thank you for listening.